welcome to Girl We Have to Talk podcast. We like actually started this episode already and we have to restart it because something happened. I don't even know what happened. Yeah, so it, the same thing did not happen. So I don't know. What a weird, weird day of recording. So fun. Um, there was also yeah. a helicopter that was just like circling my house. So who knows? Maybe aliens. Weird. We don't know. Okay, but you had an announcement. Tell us, tell us, like, last episode you were like, hey, I forgot I want to say something. So what is it? Tell us what you have to tell yeah, us. We yeah, are yeah. excited. Um, so um, uh, Tim and I planned our honeymoon, and I'm really excited about it. Woohoo! And tell us where you're going. Yeah, we're going to the Azores. Which, which Iris doesn't know where it is. I've not heard of. <laughs> no. Yeah, so, and I, and, and so it's so funny because I was talking, and then you weren't saying anything, and I was like, Iris said I lose you because you were so quiet, and I had lost you, and it was so funny. Yeah, so I, I was saying how that I would be quiet. So yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, a good like, indicator. Tim had told me right, right, exactly. Um, and so Tim um, had told me that United was flying direct to the Azores, and I was kind of like, yeah, 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 okay, sure. Like, what is that? I don't even know. And I was saying how you know how with your partner sometimes you kind of do that with them, where it's like you. I think it's like you talk to them so much you don't always like listen very mm-hmm. well, or mm-hmm. like are like, oh, yeah, I've got to look into that. But like, when you hear it somewhere else, then you're like, more interested, and you go back to your partner, and they, they're, they kind of look at you like, yeah, I already <laughs> Do you said not that remember to you. that I told you this? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, okay, or it's cool, whatever, and really did not like take it in very much. And then um, we flew somewhere recently. Um, oh, in January, we went somewhere and there was an article about it. And it was basically like an article, like, if you like this place, go here, that's like less popular. And so they're like, if you want a trip like Hawaii, go to the Azores. It's like Hawaii 30 years ago. And I was like, oh, and it had this picture of this really pretty waterfall and it's like super rugged. So basically it's a set of nine islands in the Atlantic ocean um, that are uh, two hours west of Portugal. Oh my God. I love this. So how long is the flight? How long is the flight? So that's, that's part of the great part is that it's a direct flight from Newark. And so we just have to fly to Newark and then it's only like five hours overnight. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah, it is overnight. So that's a problem for both of us because neither one of us sleep on planes. So we did splurge a little bit and got like economy plus because the first class was kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, But I'm, I'm glad at least we'll have a little extra leg room. I don't know that either one of us will sleep, but we are, I think like that day is going to be the way we planned it it's going to be kind of hopefully a more relaxed day. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, this is the most crazy trip. One of the most crazy trips I've ever planned um, because it is so where we specifically are going because even like these islands are not that well known. First of all, um, no one flew there directly except Azores Airlines until like 2019 and it was crazy expensive. So no one went there and not a lot of Americans even know about it. So a lot of Europeans will go there, um, but it's still like pretty, I mean, it's popular, but like also it's kind of one of those places that doesn't have a lot of space necessarily for mm-hmm. people. So like, we, and of course we're going to the most remote, remote islands of them all. <laughs> the ones that no one goes to, like a lot of people go to the main island and we're like, yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to fly in there, but then we're going to go to other islands. So one of the, the first island we're going to has 400 people living on the island oh I love it (laughs) yeah and then the second one has like 4,000 and then I don't know the third one how how much but I don't think a lot of tourists go to that one so there might be more people that live there but there aren't a lot of tourists that go there so it's like gonna be so rugged and of course like because of that there isn't like necessarily the same amount of research or even like when there is um like websites about stuff it's like a little like the website is not like clearly that well designed it's not that it's not well designed but it's not it could be designed better I guess is the best like you just know people are kind of throwing their information out there and it's very much like you know you kind of plan things as you go and everybody kind of knows everybody because there's not that many people so the people that live there you know are involved a lot of them are involved in the tourist industry or at least some of them so it's really interesting Um, And it's also very intricate because you have to like, so to get from one island to the other, you have to take a boat Mm -hmm. or maybe you can fly, but like some of the flights only go some days or the ferries only go some days. So we were like, okay. And then also you have to think about how much do you want to fly? 
like with the layovers and stuff, because you have to get from one place to another, and some of them are farther away from each other. So it's it was like this whole thing of like, okay, like what? How can we get from this island to this island the most efficiently, <laughs> given all the transportation? And also, like, can we find where to stay? Because the one island that had like four thousand people on it, it's called Flores. Like most of the places were already booked up. It sounds like beautiful though. Like I feel like you guys yeah. are gonna have such a nice Jamie you, and Tim type of trip. If you Google it, it looks like your jaw will drop. Like it's like these, like it's because it's the same thing as Hawaii. It was created by volcanoes. So you have these like beautiful crater like places, you have these amazing waterfalls, you have these amazing like pools you can swim in or not, or you can go canyoning, which is basically like climbing in the like on the waterfalls, I guess is like how it seems to be described. You guys are going to have more so much it. fun. Yeah, I feel like so uh, Julie's going to, uh, Ju- like in a couple of years, Julie will like this place too. She likes vacation spots like that. Oh, does she? She does. Like, I don't know that she loves to like, um, like hiking things, but I know like the pit, the picturesque part of it and like it not being like Hawaii. She would like that. Like she loves she likes like non touristy. Yes, That's she does. She does. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Because Tim and I are both like, like that. if we see no people, we will be so excited. And it's perfect yeah. also for a honeymoon. I think that's why like he really wanted to go to Bora Bora, but like just everybody like there would be so many couples there, and I think here like it is going to be busy, and I, especially like the one island when I realized like oh my gosh, so much is sold out. It kind of made me less interested. I was like, this sucks. But really, like, it's just that it's one of the most popular islands. And I just don't think it has the infrastructure to support the Mm -hmm. amount of tourists that are probably coming at this point, which is true of so many places. Yeah. Um, Which, I mean, makes me a little bit concerned. Obviously, we want to be careful. You know how me and sustainable uh, travel and I want to be careful with these, you know, places we're going and make sure that our footprint is really light. But um, I'm excited still. I think it's great. Yeah. I'm excited. And I know they're doing a lot to make tourism sustainable. So hopefully some of the reason most is sold out is because they're not trying to expand beyond what they're capable of. Exactly. So when are you all going? um, We are going at the end of August, beginning of September. So I think it's going to be a great time. Um, I think we were trying to avoid crowds, but you know, when you're traveling with most people from Europe, of course, they don't have the same school schedule. (laughs) Yeah, totally. So, and they get to holiday. Okay. They probably take a lot more time. So, lucky them. Yeah, yeah. And we're going for like almost two weeks. So oh, that's pretty this good. is going to be so nice for you. I'm excited. Well, I can't hear, yeah, wait too. to hear about it. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, There's so much more planning I'm sure we'll need to do, but at least we have and like. You said Tim likes to plan, though, right? And and, um, not the way I do I would okay. say because I think if it was up to him when I asked him like because we were having challenges in terms of like me wanting to plan it and him being a little like stressed out about that and when I asked him like well how long in advance would you plan a honeymoon he said three months and I was like oh my gosh um no like I would not plan a honeymoon three months before <laughs> no well and you know what the nice thing is sometimes you just have to realize like what is what's going to work and what's not like what are the strengths of you as a couple and you might be the person who's going to be better at that kind of stuff and that's amazing well yeah and I think also when he realized how interested I was in the Azores because here's part of my issue and this is why I plan is because when I don't plan but I know I'm going to do something then I think of every possible like I keep going from oh how about Costa Rica how about this how about Mm -hmm. that which is exactly what I was doing and so then he didn't know I was still interested in the Azores, but I was just mentioning like all the possibilities. That's all. Totally. So when he realized that I was more interested in the Azores, he's like, actually, you do need to plan that ahead. So I think that kind of got him more on board versus if I was like, well, let's go, I don't know, to say Costa Rica, because if we, if we went, it would have been off season. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just glad I feel better now. Cause I think there's, there's a lot of it, things I'm still working on with my FOMO. And I definitely think it comes up in travel where I'm like, we're missing out on something if we don't have it already planned. And I still had trouble with that when I saw so much being sold out, mm-hmm. I kept going back to like, we should have done this sooner. I should have like done it sooner, but I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. And I still think we're going to have a great time. We're going to have the best time. It's going to be great. The places we picked and maybe even better because maybe we want to pick these places and Mm -hmm. they're going to be so great. Like the one place we picked on Flores that I finally found because the pictures weren't great on Airbnb, 
But like, I, I did a deep dive and I literally read like 130 reviews because I was like, okay, oh I'm my just going to read that. every review because it's going to stress me out. Because I feel like um, when I was doing other research, I missed stuff and then I went to book it and then I was like, oh no, that's not going to work. So I was like, I have to just do the deep dive. And the reviews were like, yeah, you can see like waterfalls and like the ocean outside the window. Like, oh, this sounds amazing. Exactly. So I'm really excited. Yay. I'm excited. Yeah. We're all excited for you. Your yeah. virtual friendship group is pumped. <laughs> now, do you have any trips um, planned or upcoming? Oh, God. I have, like, oh. <laughs> I'm Did going. on something? No. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, like, f- was so fortunate in my all of my 20s to miss out on bachelorette parties. <laughs> now, I mean, I've only been to a few, and now I feel like I've got, like, I have, I think I know of at least three that I'm going to, and there might be an additional one. Well, I'm um, so glad I made mine so low stakes. <laughs> yeah, it was very low key. Thank you. Um, You're so yeah, I'm going to Vegas, and that's okay. going to be in July. And then I'm supposed. To, I think I'm going to plan like a very local but fun bachelorette party for my friend who's renewing her vows. And Aww, then that's I'm, cute. Yeah, it's going to be super cute. And then I'm helping with Jen, um, Jen with two N's, blonde Jen. She's getting married in October, and I'm helping her friend with her bachelorette party. So I'll be going to that, too, and it'll be super fun. But that's, super, like, local-ish. We're going to Michigan. Um, mm-hmm. So that'll be fun. And then Mike and I are going to go to somewhere, probably Wisconsin Dells, but you never know. The door, we're, we're still kind of keeping it open. We're taking the dog with us. So we'll see Aww. where we end up. And then is, there, is it is that because of the dog sitting stuff? Oh no, just because we like she didn't she usually stays with um like Mike's grandmother, but like okay. she she likes to go places. So we're like we'll yeah, just take know, you with. Yeah. We'll just take you it's with because we cool. took her um on our ski trip last year, so we'll take her Aww. someplace this year too. That's um, so cute. And you just crate her, or she does she do okay? She does okay. Like she's really good. Okay. Uh, she's good. really good. Um. And we don't go, like, if we take her with us, we're not going too many places without her. We'll take, we'll, we'll probably go mostly places that we can take Katie, like, wa- like hiking or walking or kayaking yeah. and stuff like that, like stuff that she can do. And then if we go to mm-hmm. dinner or whatever, we would just leave her. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. So we, she's really, and the, most of the Airbnbs that are acceptable for dogs, like, they're like, if she, like she hasn't done it but like she likes to mark her territory so the last place we took her she like peed as soon as she got in the door um and like we just cleaned it up and that was the only accident she had she just let she's just gotta let you know when she gets there so she pees right away yeah no I mean that's not I mean my issue with Maya is like sometimes she scratched up places so that always makes me nervous Oh, the yeah. last time we took her, we crated, and we also had, like, calming meds, and that worked yeah. okay. She's got some calming meds, so I'd probably give her some of those, too. But, like, we left her at the ski place, like, just to go to dinner, or, like, when we went skiing, mm-hmm. we left her, and she's fine. Like, the thing with okay. her right. is if you crate her, that's when she causes destruction. Like, the last time oh, we, Oh, yeah, like, I mean, every dog is different. Yeah, we've crated her, like, she came with a crate when we adopted her, mm-hmm. and, like, we've tried to crate her before, and she like has completely destroyed a bed. She has like I'm afraid she would hurt oh. herself in a crate. Like I'm like truly afraid well, she yeah, would hurt herself. Yeah, I mean herself. you have to do what works for her then. Yes, and and what Katie likes is freedom. She's a free dog. She just wants to be able to do her own thing, and she's like really good if she's free. And we have like a little camera, which probably we'll bring with us, where you I can watch her on my phone. And she usually mm-hmm. just sits and looks out the window. <laughs> wants to do her own thing and she's been better lately too she never is destructive in the house but energy wise she's like going to daycare twice a week so that's like good Mm -hmm. for her too awesome um but yeah that's that's it those are my trips so like lots of like little small things nothing as good as yours nothing as fun and unique as yours so i'm gonna be who knows i mean i mean they will be be, exactly no they will be fun trips but they won't be like Azor, is it Azores? Is Aziz? What are we Azores, calling? Azores. It won't I be the be Azores. Totally wrong. I think I you're have right. No idea. Yeah, it'll um, be fun, but it won't be the Azores. Yeah, I mean, uh, sure. Every trip's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and I mean, I think it was. I think the other thing about it that's so stressful is like just lots of talking to people about it, and of course, like it's it's just like a wedding. Things mm-hmm. are so hyped up. Mm-hmm. Oh, your honey. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I, you know, on my yes. honeymoon, or this is what, or I would go. I think 
someone told me like, oh, I would, you know, I want to go all out. And I'm just like, oh, should we be doing that? I mean, no, and because just you, know, you are... guys like to travel a lot anyway. So it doesn't have to be like when people say that it's because they don't travel a lot. You and te- you guys, like, you well, love to I, travel. I heard this from Lauren, who travels a lot. But you know what she was saying? was that she was like usually on a budget and so she'd rather not be on mm-hmm. a budget and I was kind of like yeah I mean we're on a budget and I think I always would want to be on a budget yeah well I think it's also a different like, way to look at it she travels a lot but also like I have to think of it also this way like she is currently a single person so I think like everything would be exciting right like she like you like I think there's a little bit of distance between your marriage your wedding and the honeymoon which maybe has made you like a little bit more less like and like now that you're not excited but like it doesn't mean like even the way you all got married and did that it was like yeah. not as much and I think with Lauren when she gets married because we're going to speak it into existence I know that's something she wants so when she gets married I think it will be a bigger thing but I think that's like more her personality than it is of yours anyway I, I agree I agree mm-hmm. and I think both I think options are great and I'm going to be excited yeah, I think it for both of you to, like, totally think about not having a budget I just always want for one sure. and for some people I think it'd be stressful having one so it just yes. depends for me yeah. it's like I it would be stressful to it would be stressful to have a budget and so I opt to be cheap like I got married in the courthouse and then had a reception well, at Giannis. it's just more like, my vibe yeah I actually kind of that's when I I, I think I'm saying the same thing is yeah. like I like, I don't, I'm always going to go for like what's reasonable, mm-hmm. even if, yeah. Because if I had no budget, then I feel like then that's like a, like anything can happen. And then it's like real. Oh, no, I feel, yeah, I get what you're saying. I get like, what you're I saying. Like I want it but... to be like tight. Like I want, like, cause even like, even when I plan something that's cheap, I don't really have a budget for it. The budget is cheap, is this like the most well, yeah. inexpensive yeah, but comfortable saying. way that's, to do that's it. That's kind of what I go for too, typically. It's just, I guess why I'm saying budget is because we got a certain amount of money from, you know, people, Woo-hoo! right? And so, and, and so we were trying to like, how could we keep it to that and not have to spend out of our own money? And we also, I think very, which was a great idea was we um, got um, credit cards. So we had points. So Mm. we actually are using points to fly um, and not have to pay. Oh no, are you gone again? right in we had the this episode that you all listened to the beginning part of it that happened before this part of it was recorded like a month ago and then we got disconnected yeah. and we just gave we were like fuck it and we were like no we're not <laughs> doing it um so for now we're going to jump right into answering our question we have like a, a, a i think a really good question for this week and then mm-hmm. when we do our next episode which will come out just so you all know in two weeks we'll talk a little bit more about that next time but we're going to be moving to every other week um, which is how we started originally. We're just going to get back to that. I think it'll just be better content and less stressful um, for this very free podcast. So, <laughs> right. so we're going to do that. But for today, we're just going to read the question. All good, Jamie? Yeah. Are we doing your question or my question? Okay. So, let's, um, so for today, let's go into the my question. And then the next episode, which will be a longer okay. one, we'll do yours. Okay, because I could get to mine. Not, it's not a big deal. But I should have asked you that earlier. Then no. Do you right want it? Do you want to go to yours? Because we can. I don't care. I don't care I either no way. Oh boy. Um, yeah, it's tough when nobody cares. Okay, we'll just do this one, and then the next one you'll do yours. Okay. So save it. Okay. Keep it. Keep it close at hand. Okay. Sounds good. So this All one is right, called. Opening yours. Okay, let, I'll read it and you'll open it. So I'll read it. So it's yep. called Best Friend is Getting into Another Toxic Relationship. How do I get over my grief? Which I think is an interesting question because I've never thought about having grief over my friend being in a relationship. But when I read the question, I was like, oh, that's valid. So mm-hmm. three years ago, my best friend called us and asked us to pick her up from a city five hours away. She was leaving a 15-year abusive relationship with her daughter. We spent months of emotional investment into her and her daughter living in our home and thousands of dollars helping her rebuild her life. Recently, I had to leave for three months for work and suggested she stay at my place instead of mo- me moving everything. And we agreed that she would send us that she would send as much money as she could, but otherwise I would cover it. 
She did not send too much, but she was able to make some impulse purchases instead. This is just another part of the investment I put into her life. And I recognize that one should not expect someone to change even when they help them, but this is just rough. She's such a lovely person and I did not mind helping because it was not necessarily her fault that she was in an abusive relationship from, an early teen, from her early teenage years. Abuse victims are just that, they're victims. I was like, okay, good for you that you actually acknowledge that. She was, so back to this question, she was very scared to start dating and I encouraged her to wait a little later to date. I encouraged her to wait a little later to date because she is a very all or nothing person and very busy. And I think her daughter is still pretty young. Her biggest concern was that she would not be, which her biggest concern was that she would find another bad guy. I said that we could also speak to her about it if we had concerns and she would listen. Well, guess what? Unfortunately, she's recently gotten into a relationship with a man that I am convinced is another narcissist. Among other mm. things, he has a girlfriend and says that he has been deciding on who to choose and they have been mm. on dates in the meantime. They have not kissed yet but they call it date. And there is an emotional, there is a very clearly an emotional affair at the very least going on. It's very upsetting and her family does not approve, but she is convinced they do because they are not yelling at her about it. Real and good relationships rarely, if ever, begin this way. Anyway, here's the thing. I do not want to, I do not want advice for dealing with this situation. I've talked to her multiple times and she keeps asking me to trust her. The trust is gone. I am just grieving all the time and energy and money and effort we have put into rebuilding her life and her self-esteem. She won't listen, so we are going to have to chalk it up to a painful life lesson. So here's the advice that I want. How do I let go of the anger towards her and just accept that she's going to be making poor decisions? How do I potentially mend this relationship when it makes me so furious that she has done this? How do I remove my desire to control people who have made poor decisions? As a background, my mom had a mental illness my whole life and I've always, and I was always trying to help her. So spending decades of time and all this money to try to help people who always return to their vices is so exhausting. How do I remove the desire to control others and just appreciate their friendship and who they are? And that's the question. Oh my gosh. When you find out the answer, could you send it our way? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Cause I feel like, I think that, that my advice probably lends more towards the fact that, like, I don't, I don't think that, I guess I could, I guess, well, let me say, like, I feel like they kind of go hand in hand, um, her making these decisions, and you wanting to control her, and I guess I think they're separate, like, they go hand in hand, and they're separate, like, you should not try to control your friends, however, like, if you're around somebody who's just been making bad decisions and not only that they're making bad decisions but kind of involving you in them it does make it so that you kind of want to take a step back and so like that would be my only suggestion is I don't think that you're ever going to get to the place where you're just okay with her making these decisions because time and time again I think she's shown and historically you've seen through relationships with your mother and I'm sure because you're a caretaker you probably just take these types of relationships on like they're probably a magnet to you because you're the, your caregiver um so these types of people find you and that's kind of the basis of your friendship and relationship with people. I'm assuming. And I just think if you want to change that, you probably have to change how you show up in those friendships. Um, and that mm. doesn't mean you can't be caring, but it probably means that you cannot be their mother. You have to just be their friend. And honestly, I wouldn't be friends with somebody who I thought was making like terrible choices that impacted my life. That's my only yeah. advice to stop being friends with her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty human to um, to I mean to have such a such a such a not fit. I don't know what the such a mismatch in a relationship mm -hmm. that the only way that you can actually honor who they are and sort of have radical acceptance is them not being actively in your life. Right. Um, and I feel like, you know, definitely I think opposites attract, right? Like peanut butter and jelly. Like that, yeah. you know. Well, uh, opposites or, attracting is not, opposites is not necessarily a mismatch, right? Sometimes right. it's like we're too similar. Yeah, that's true. I don't think that in this case, though, I think that 
she's looking for I think that the truth is like you're looking to kind of not have to I'm not saying you shouldn't be friends with this person but I think you probably have to be like hey with your life the way that it is right now like I don't think I can be as close to you and like mm-hmm. give her some space and that might be upsetting to her because she's really used to you always being there but I think in order for you to be there for yourself you probably have to just be like I'm going to give you some space and I think we've talked a lot about friends taking space from each other on this podcast and I do think that this it's probably another case where you need to take some space and either she'll accept it or she won't. Yeah. Um, and stop giving her money. I think, you know, like it's hard when somebody's in an abusive relationship, but I don't know, like sometimes people have to hit rock bottom before they change. And I think you being there constantly to pick it up for her. And also like the fact that she didn't send you any money kind of takes you for granted, takes advantage of you a little bit. It might be a great idea to kind of give yourself some space and work on like your boundaries for relationships. Yeah. And I don't know that it's, I guess I keep coming back to like, I think this is normal, what this person is feeling. And so I get the sense that it's like, well, I should just accept this. And I don't, I don't know that that's true. I mean, I think it's fair to be upset. Mm -hmm. and to wish that the other person would understand and be more in line with what worked for you. And so I think maybe just allowing it to be kind of messy, even if that's not the way you want it to be, might be helpful. Yeah, and do you have to, if you accept someone, do you have to allow them to take up space in your life, though? Like, if it's not healthy for you, like, if you're like, my reaction is that when I see something like this happen it makes me want to come in and fix it and so like I don't want to be around people who constantly need fixing um Mm -hmm. at least in the meantime while I'm kind of working on my own boundaries and how to turn that off like is it fair for her to ask for space while she figures that out like taking the accountability on herself like I need to figure out how to not want to fix your life Mm -hmm. and I don't know how to do that right now so like I need space Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I that's... think all that makes sense. And I mean, she even said, like, I, I, I know this is over. Like I've made that decision. I just want to figure out how to be okay with it. And I, yeah, I just don't know if that's possible. <laughs> like it might not feel okay. It might be mm-hmm. a real loss. Yeah, like, of course. I think there's, yeah, there's just like a lot of messages we get around oh, you should just be able to move on. It's not a big deal. And um, I just don't think that's very realistic. No, I don't think so either. I don't think so either. I don't think she can just say, I'm going to move on. I definitely think she probably needs to, you know, take some time to herself. I really do think so. Like, I don't think she's going to be able to, to do it otherwise. I think that she's, only going to be able to 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 get this because she it's like a little baby bird that's how she sees her friend and the only way she's not going to be able to do this and this could extend to other relationships is to not have that you know I mean obviously like long term if you're on a diet which I know you don't do diets and I mean that is valid but I'm going to use a terrible analogy like if you were trying to cut out sweets you wouldn't be like I'm going to buy these Twinkies and leave them in my house and hope not to eat them you're just mm. not going to buy the Twinkie. You're just going to be like, that doesn't mean you'll never buy a Twinkie. That doesn't mean that in the future you might not have like one Twinkie at grandma's house. I say this because my grandmother had Twinkies yesterday and I haven't had <laughs> Twinkies in years. And I was like, yeah, bring me one of those. They were disgusting. Yum. Um, no, no, no. They're not good. They don't <laughs> taste like real food. It's real weird. Um, but yeah, like, you know, if you're trying to cut out sweets, you don't buy yourself like a box of Twinkies. You just don't. Like, you know. I have a hard time. I'm saying this is a personal experience. I have a hard time saying no to sweets. So, you know, I wouldn't just like have thousands of sweets in my house and torture myself and be like, no, you must resist. I would just be like, okay, I'm not going to buy sweets for right now. And then when I feel like I have my addiction of sugar and control, I might like, you know, bring a Ben and Jerry's home with me. Um, But I think I have to kind of learn how to to regulate that. Like I have to learn to control that. I think that's just friendship. Like, I don't think she's in a space right now and not because of this friend, because of what she said about her mom. That's why it makes me think that I think this is her pattern and it's how she feels like she has to show up. So I think while she's working on herself, 
and I'm not so that's why I'm being really cautious not to say there's something wrong with your friend like it's a personal thing like while you're working on that boundary for yourself it might be nice to give yourself some space right don't bring the two yeah. home I like how you sort of made that temporary too like there's a possibility for maybe something to be different although I don't know this sounds based on the situation it sounds pretty permanent but um yeah. sometimes I mean, if you, if she, maybe her friend would better shit together though which we can hope yeah, I just get the sense that based on the history that she shared, like she probably should have, I think there's a lot of shame here around why did I, why did I allow this to happen? And I think because of that, it's like, I should have maybe years ago or, you know, earlier set a boundary. And in that situation, sometimes I think it's harder to, for, to come mm -hmm. back from that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, um, I feel like she's just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna wish the best for it. It's a tough situation. Yeah. Especially if it's a good it friend. A it's, it's, it's like a lot. It is. Yeah, absolutely. I think just seeing it that way and sometimes just acknowledging it as a loss really validates what the feelings are. Yeah. Um, do you have any additional thoughts on this one? No, I don't think so. It's a tough situation. I, I'm glad that she's in a place that she realizes what her boundary needs to be at this point. Mm -hmm. And that's all. I mean, honestly, I am almost 35 this year and I'm still figuring out what my boundaries <laughs> are. So. Oh my gosh. Wait, Iris, what did you just do? I said I'm almost 35 this year. So I did not age myself up. I did not say I'm 35, which is what you would do. And what? I just, no, I, I Okay, first of all, I think I said I'm almost, but you're saying it even like six months before six months, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. Like, it's I like, wonder it'll be how April. it'll be as you get older. So I wonder if it is like. A so by the time I hit thirty, by the time I hit thirty-eight, maybe I'll just be like I'm thirty-nine <laughs> in January. Maybe. Be... I mean, I always remember saying I'm almost. I don't think I remember saying I am. But if that's what no, I remember, I did not know what your birthday. I did not know how old you were for the longest because you kept telling me. I can't remember how old you were. But you kept telling me, like, let's just say you said you were 37 or whatever. That makes sense, because I think I met you when you were probably 36. So I think you were like, I'm 37. I'm 37. And then you had your birthday, and you turned 37. And I was like, why did this whole year you've been right, telling you me you're 37? Me this. I just yeah. always remember saying I'm almost. And no, you literally kept telling me it was the same. You were like, I am 37. And I was like, okay, great. And then you had a birthday, and you turned 37. And I was like, wait, like, I'm what? Yeah. <laughs> So yes, now, now, like I'm just, I'm acknowledging I'm my, and I am in my 35th year, which I do acknowledge, right? We talked about that before too. Um, mm -hmm. It is my 35th gotcha. time around the sun um, mm -hmm. and what a ride, but yeah, still figuring out my boundaries, hundred percent. I don't have them all in place and they might change. What's the boundary today might not be tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's very typical. So there's no way to have them really all figured out. Hell no. I'm probably going to be on my deathbed and be like, this is a new boundary for me. Don't come into <laughs> my hospital room with flowers. It smells bad. I could totally see that for myself. Um, yeah. But okay, this was great. I This will be a fun episode because it'll just be totally different. Like, Yeah. <laughs> it'll be like, start it off one time, start off the other. And then next time. I don't even think you'll be able to tell. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to post it and I'm going to listen to it. And then I'll be like, oh, that was so pretty seamless. <laughs> I'm sure the other 20 people will listen to it. They've probably been yeah, like, where exactly. have you been? Exactly. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, that was it for me. It was great chatting with you. And then we'll yeah. see you all in two weeks. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Alrighty. Bye.